password for everything. Uh, you know, come come back to bite them, and you know, especially I think one of my personal favorites is you know people give you the password to get onto their computer, and then you know you know they're all of a sudden you know you go to their you know, they're, they're, you know, you, you go right to, you know, mail.yahoo.com and boom, because they set their computer to save their credentials for two weeks. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Yahoo Messenger or MSN Messenger, or I'm going to say one that probably nobody's heard of in a while, ICQ, you know, pops right up and, you know, you're logged right into that. Um, you know, you don't even, all you needed was the password to their computer. And now you have the keys to their whole little kingdom. Uh, I know it doesn't seem like much when you're looking at it from, from you know, large scale IT side, but I mean, it, it is, it is an issue because, you know, the person, that's somebody's whole life right there. And, you know, just by giving you the password to log in, they've just given you the, the you know, the entire key. I mean, I, right, I mean, rightfully so. I mean, you know, you could if you know if you boot off a CD and, and reset the user account, which can be done through you know password tools and all type of stuff. You have a legitimate reason, but I mean, again, even that, you know, the people save their they don't want their credentials saved, or you know, or you know, it, it, it's a really really big issue, especially when things are cached and all type of stuff, and and you know, cookies are are you know so so readily now not cleaned out by people because they don't know better. You know, it, it's an issue. You know, and and I think some of the some of the bigger problems. Uh, especially, you know, Norton and, and some of those other products are now, you know, doing password protection pieces to try to help people. And I, I don't think, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, how how secure that really is. I haven't played with it, but it's something that, you know, maybe we'll, we'll look into for another podcast. But, you know, seeing that as, you know, Norton is, you know, saving, you know, trying to protect people's, people's local passwords, it shows you how much of an issue it is and, and you know, how much people need to be wary of it. Uh, you know, one, one of the other, one of the other, um, things I, I wanted to uh, talk about as well is uh, when we're on the topic of that, um, you know, programs like Facebook and, and Twitter, you know, do pass your credentials. And we all know, uh, you know, they dealt with, with an issue uh, recently uh, regarding that, uh, not recently within the last couple of weeks, but recently over the last year or so with, uh, you know, their, what credentials they were passing to, and especially Facebook, I guess, really got cracked down. I don't remember if Twitter did or not, but I know Facebook really, you know, got cracked down for passing credentials to people, other programs. And, you know, that's something I, I really think, too, that people don't really realize. You know, uh, just because a company's on the Internet doesn't mean they're a big company. It doesn't mean they're secure. Um you know, some you know, you know, little little companies, little game companies that do get tied up with Facebook. You know, if it's a little company with only five, ten, you know, people, they might not be as security conscious as a big company like Facebook or Google. And uh, you know, it's it's a problem, especially when they're passing credentials around. And uh, you know, it's something I think everybody should be should be a little leery about, which is why I'm saying you know you shouldn't have one password for everything. You should have a password. You know, just for Facebook, just for Twitter, you know, just for Google. You know, I mean, you should have, you know, these multiple passwords out there. And even if it's just one password for, you know, those three or four things, I mean, it helps. Uh, you know, and, and one thing, too, is, you know, your password list, not leaving it, you know, in a place that's wide open to everybody. You know, uh, don't be afraid to put it in a drawer. Don't be afraid to, you know, hide it, you know, hide it somewhere, keep it in your wallet, a place that's safe, you know. Um, you know, especially, um, especially with, with Facebook, like I said, passing the crimson around you, you want to know how the other, not so much Facebook, but how the other company is storing the passwords. Uh, and one of the other things, especially, uh, I know uh, a lot of people have uh, been using, uh, like sociable, uh, clients like that, that go ahead and, uh, you know, hold, hold, hold your credentials for you. It's this way if you want to send like a piece of information to one to to like six seven different forms of social media you just type in the thing hit send and it sends it all for you so you don't have to waste your time and again you're dealing with the same same single sign-on issue um i know you know ping fm uh you know a lot of places like that i'm not trying to signal any company out because believe me there you know there are hundreds of them out there but you know it's, it's a problem you know when when a company is holding your credentials for everything um yeah it, it, it's a problem you know it it really is uh, you know, and like, and, and some of the other other issues, you know, too, is you know, op open source, open source databases, open source, you know, PHP. Uh, you know, uh, how readily are they patched? Are they patched against vulnerabilities that could predominantly, you know, get your single sign-on information? 
Uh, I know a lot of a lot of places, especially with custom code, they don't do updates as often as they should because they they don't want to break their custom code. Uh, you know, it's it's a bomb, especially you know when you're dealing with with. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Microsoft especially has had their their issues over the years, but you know, especially with open source products, you know, or or like I said, a small mom and pop company. You know, somebody maybe you know doesn't do patches as readily, you know, because they're busy. I mean, it's in human nature to you know you know to do stuff like this, and it's something that we really need to be very cautious about. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to wanted to talk about off of the the topic of uh, a little bit off the topic of identity management, but um, more towards the the topic of uh, sec- well, you know, topic of security, obviously. But things I wanted to bring up here is uh, I blogged about it today. I don't know if anybody had a chance to read it yet, but this DNS changer Trojan. Um, you know, I, I know the FBI had, has taken over the, the servers and all that type of stuff, and they're saying on you know July 9th it's going to be doomsday. Uh, I'll just read this a little bit. DN, uh, DNS changer is a trojan that will change the infected domain name DNS things in order to divert traffic to uh, unsolicited and potentially illegal sites. The trojan is designed to change name server registry value to customize. Uh, the custom IP address, this is an IP address that is usually encrypted with the body of the Trojan. Now, if you have this thing, the odds are chance you have more than just that piece of malware. Because I'm going to guess it's probably sending you to uh, to malicious sites. And, uh, I mean, I mean, from what I mean, this thing, I mean, I'm going to guess if you have this thing on your machine, you probably got a root kit on your box as well. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I mean, if you got this, I mean, I don't know how much, how secure your system is, but... You know, but here, here's the interesting part. The FBI, under court order, ex, ex, yeah, expiring July 9th, the Internet Systems uh, is operating replacement of DNS servers from the Rogue Digital Network, which from the actually should be Rogue Digital Network. This will allow uh, affected network times to identify addicted hosts and avoid sudden disruption of services to victim machines. Now, this has been going on for how long now? And to me, the FBI keeping these servers up is just allowing the FBI to pretty much do a man-in-the-middle attack to everybody's computer and know what they're doing. Now, do they monitor us? Probably. But it's pretty much allowing them to perform a man-in-the-middle attack for everybody's machine. This is like everybody, every hacker's dream to get data is this virus. So, something I really think people need to need to really, really be aware of um, and, and really keep their eyes open for because it, it's definitely... Definitely a uh, definitely a big issue. One of the things that I did put on my site and why I brought it up is I brought there are there is a way to remove it uh, manually uh, by removing some registry keys in the system control set services and TCP/IP parameters. Uh, there's a way to do that there. So if you do know of anybody that's having the problem, there is a fix there for it. By the way, July 9th is being called the Internet Doomsday. By the way, just so everybody is a uh, is aware. By the way, I have to love. By the way, just while we're on the topic of uh, of, uh, of interesting things people are doing, I love this article. By the way, I just received by email on, on the podcast here saying that people have done background checks and saying that why is uh, why is Microsoft using Linux back then for Skype? Well, obviously they didn't design the product; they bought it. So that's that would be why. So. Those of you that are going to receive that email, I'm sure it's going to be spammed around. This so way, you're uh, well aware of that, as everybody knows. They didn't, you know, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't make the product; they bought it. So that's why. Uh, by the way, today and as well on the news, I figured I'll, I'll cover some other security topics uh, since I talked about my, my big topic of the day. And if you have any questions, by the way, feel free to uh, tweet me at uh, Lepanti Tech or send me an email at admin at lepantechnologies.com. I'm always checking my email. Pretty bad when you get up 2 in the morning and the first thing you do is grab your iPhone to check your email. Uh, a, user in, uh, a user in Russia f- a forum is claiming that they have hacked LinkedIn and have acquired over 6.5 million account details. Uh, account details include password hashes, uh, but not usernames. Uh, people have said on Twitter that they found their real LinkedIn password as hashes on the list. So I think the easiest way to protect against this is going to be able to just change your LinkedIn password. 
By the way, I've also reading down here in the comments, an anonymous reader tipped us to related news that the LinkedIn iOS application harvests information from your calendar and transmit it to their servers unencrypted. So, just uh, more information for you there. One of the things I think is, is especially interesting with uh, with with LinkedIn, especially, is their, you know, it's one company that you know they they claim to have like like twenty five million users and is growing daily, and they claim to be more relevant than anybody else, which I, I really believe they are. You know, it's you know they are a, a great, um, you know, they they are a great company, and uh, you know their IPO on the stock market did very well. And that's one thing that Facebook is still struggling with. I'm just reading an article today on uh, on businessinsider.com talking about how Facebook has officially failed. Um, so that's uh, if anybody took my advice and didn't buy it, uh, you're welcome. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is Flame Malware hijacks Windows update. Um, well, I mean, a lot of things. I mean, they, I mean, this is the same thing almost come flicker, but uh, let me give you a little more information about it. Uh, unfolds about the recently discovered flame malware. Researchers have found three modules named Snag, Gadget, and Munch. There are used to launch was essentially a man-in-the-middle attack against computers on a network. As a result, Kaspersky researchers say when a machine attempts to connect to Windows Update, it redirects the connection to an infected machine and sends fake malicious Windows updates to the client. Now, this is something that I've been saying is going to happen for years, and it's finally just happening. Uh, Microsoft is going to take better precautions to harden up Windows Update. Well, too late, the virus is already out there. Uh, what is Curtis... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, according to Symantec, the snack module sniffs NetBIOS requests on local network NetBIOS name res resolution allows computers to find each other on the local network via peer-to-peer -peer opening up avenue for spoofing. Findings may have prompted Microsoft to say that it plans to harden Windows Update against attacks in the future through company did not anticipate relative issues. So, by the way, I'm also reading here down that uh, 80 different CNC domains point to over 18 different IP addresses located in Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands, Hong Kong, Poland, and UK and other countries uh, regarding this particular situation. So, again, Microsoft going to harden up Windows Update. I'm sure they're probably going to have an out-of-band patch coming out pretty soon for this. Uh, I would seemingly hope they would, especially for something as severe as this. I would hope they would rush a patch out. Um, you know, not, not, a, not a little issue. Let's leave it at that. Uh, by the way, I'm just reading as well here that LinkedIn did confirm that, that it was... Uh, Hacked, so that's uh, definitely something that you want to uh, go ahead. If you have a LinkedIn account, I suggest changing your password as soon as possible. Actually, it was a good week this week for security news. Um, so that, you know, like I said, anybody that's you know has a link has a LinkedIn account, or, or even if you have some some stuff linked to it, uh, like Twitter or something like that, I, I would suggest changing your password just for just for safekeeping. One of the other things that we uh, that we had blogged about uh, early in the week that I just want to talk about in case anybody wasn't uh, hasn't read the blog. We're beginning a lot of hits lately. Um, by the way, the, our last we we're, we're posting our, our podcast by the way, up on iTunes. So those of you that are following us because they found us iTunes, uh, thank you for that. And uh, those of you that. Uh, or found us uh, on our website. I want to thank you for that as well. Um, 